Uh, I'm going to uh, bring up the architect, and let me just say uh, something as odd that uh, goes off the stage. Um, he's going to give you a nice presentation and a PowerPoint. Everything that we've done in terms of looking to revamp the infrastructure, this is not done backwards. It's done with education first and foremost in mind. The project itself is driven by the educational staff. So the educational staff has come to our building committee and driven this, and we've designed it around the needs of the students. This is not an infrastructure first project, but an education first project. And having said that, I would like at this time to bring up the project architect, Jim Alexander. Thank you, Jim. Thank you all uh, very much for inviting me here. I feel like the pressure is really on <laughs> after these excellent presentations and, and the goals that have been established. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with the school committee and the, and the building committee here. It's been, uh, made things so much easier in welcoming us to Methuen and trying to understand the conditions at the high school, which many of you know better than if we ever will, and to come up with a plan to move forward. I did want to thank one person here from my staff, Nancy Goodwin, who's been with us throughout as a principal. Just to raise your hand, Nancy. Uh, I also feel a little guilty for being the mouth of spokesman for all of these great people on the team, and engineers and everyone. So with that, though, let's do our best and show you what we're thinking about. Um, you all know the school very well. Sometimes, though, coming from the outside and looking at the school, we may see some things that we've sort of taken for granted. Uh, one is, of course, when we first came up, was, well, where is the entrance to the school actually located? And, of course, we know it's here. What are the conditions of the exterior, limited windows, sills that are over four feet off the ground? And, of course, the nearest person uh, in the building is usually about 100 feet or more away from a small window. And then we have what looks sort of like a little bit of a warehouse uh, presentation. Uh, but when we really look then inside the building, uh, we really look at conditions which are, are pretty some amazing and we understand the, the quality of students that have come from the school, uh, but the issues of the corridor situations, the auditorium where the stage really can't even handle the wonderful chorus and activities that you have, uh, and other interior conditions, not the least of which, of course, are the numbers of entranceways and access points uh, throughout the school, really making any kind of control, uh, control very difficult. Um, this image, again, we talked about the open classrooms, uh, to like the, the last school around that still has that concept, uh, so we look at that as a major issue to be solved. Uh, expansion of some of the programs, the media area, of course, which is locked in in this particular location. But we begin to see then the positive parts, too, of, of the program. The challenges, though, for us as architects really is to look at the fact that the classrooms, you know, such as they are, the open classrooms, still have very limited light and views. The egress is not really code compliant. We're not nearly up to standards with universal accessibility. Um, and as I mentioned, one of the interesting things about the dimensions, if you look at the width of the high school, 175 feet, think of a normal apartment building with a corridor and apartments on both sides. This is three time, more than three times as wide as a normal apartment building. So in terms of, of energy efficiency, bringing in light and ventilation, this is a real challenge. Uh, of course, we mentioned, um, Arthur mentioned the problem with accreditation, which will be, is a real deficient situation. But the big question for us was, can the building really be made to meet current architecture, uh, current educational standards? Can we accommodate a program? I think the good news here, there are several very strong things about the building. It is structurally in very good shape, of uh, sound construction. It has been wonderfully maintained by citizens. Um, the grid works very well for classrooms and the big news really is that 82 percent of the building we feel can be reused for a contemporary classroom program, educational program. It lends itself to phasing, uh, which you see, we'll see. In fact, one of the interesting things, and this is where I think Methuen is, is really such a unique community in, in the history of sort of architects, 
uh, that you have such a great legacy of wonderful buildings in Methuen that were built by great families who passed them on to all of us. Uh, so we really look at this project as a chance to do that. It was a 1970s modernist building, and we know those are kind of hard to love sometimes. Uh, but we're hoping that the things we do will really make this a building that you'll be proud of for generations. So it is also effective and sustainable. Um, when we looked at alternatives, it wasn't just, oh, let's come up with a bright idea and let's go build it. Uh, the Mass Building Authority and the School Building Authority is very thorough. We must look at alternatives. So in the educational program that we were given, there are some very clear guidelines. One is to really focus the educational program uh, more closely on smaller units. So the idea that it will be a two-house system for the 9th and 10th grade and 11th and 12th grades. So they're broken down in smaller educational components. Of course, we, studies have shown that daylight and views not only reduce energy consumption, they do contribute to education. We need a major expansion of the science program that would be central to both the upper and lower houses. Of course, the need to deal with the special ed programs, go tech, all of the music and art programs, all of these things have been well worked out with the building committee. One of the things that isn't always so obvious that we found in a lot of schools, the idea of a central gathering place where students might actually gather, have an impromptu uh, musical recital, have a, a, a gathering of an informal nature has become quite important, I think, to the modern students. Centralized teaching, we have focused on classrooms that are just slightly uh, in the state guidelines, slightly smaller, so we have a reserved area for teacher preparation where teachers can work. And we wanted to really get a new identity to express the excitement of the school. I mentioned the four options. I'm really not going to uh, belabor these. I just there were four things we studied, and we did cost estimates for those. And the next image is just showing you how we came to the conclusion for the, the scheme that I'm going to show you. Um, they all ranged from the 300 in the 300,000 uh, square foot range. Uh, the current program is for 370,000 square feet, which is the largest, of the, the smallest rather, of the programs we looked at. Cost-wise, they also range from $94 million to the current proposal of $75.5 million. So we have chosen, I think, a cost-effective but also a pretty exciting scheme. Thanks. And these are the issues we were looking at before. I think uh, these are the things that we tried to solve, and let me show you how we've done it. The idea is the new addition would occupy the space, call the school, this is where the, of course, the auditorium entry corridor is. We looked at a scheme which kept all of those spaces, but unfortunately it was the largest, least efficient scheme. So the idea is to put the new addition here, demolishing the existing auditorium and that wing. Uh, and allowing us little impact now on the rest of the site. Um, the next image shows how this begins to work. One of the very fortunate things that we found out is that this block of the school, remember now the, uh, the food service is here, we use in the middle, was adequate to take all of the classroom and administrative spaces. So we were able to redevelop this block, which referred to as the classroom block. Um, so that the lower house is on one side, the upper house and the Votec on the other. We have administrative areas in the center, a special ed administration here, next to the main entry. Just back um, the way we're doing this is, and I'll show you an image of this later, is to create an open uh, skylit a corridor down the middle on two levels, each of which has its own stair and provides circulation among the houses. So we're able to get double classrooms, one on the outside, one looking over this lighted interior court space, uh, which develops then the whole classroom block. 